I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I got a pretty freaking cool product to show you today if you, like me, use the TBS Unify video transmitter on your builds. And I have used the TBS Unify on basically all of my builds, uh, all the recent builds that I've done. And why is that? And the answer is that it supports a feature called Smart Audio. Smart Audio lets the flight controller talk to the video transmitter, and it means that you can change the transmit power and the channel and put it into pit mode and take it out of pit mode. Basically, anything you need to do with the video transmitter can be done uh, via software from the flight controller. And the most obvious way to do that is from the Betaflight OSD. You can change those settings from within the OSD, but you can also use a USB cable uh, and an Android app. There's one that'll do that. Uh, and you can even set up a Lua script on your Tyrannus if you have the technical know-how to do that. Uh, and you can change the settings from your Tyrannus screen using the buttons on the front of your Tyrannus. All of those features require smart audio. And once you get used to having that, I got to tell you, it freaking change your life. Uh, you show up at a, at a fly-in and everybody's like, what channel are you on? What channel are you on? And you're like, I don't care. Tell me what channel you want me to be on. Doesn't matter. And, uh, and you can go from 600 milliwatts when you're flying freestyle by yourself to 25 milliwatts when you're racing, no problem. No fuss, no muss, no hassle, no dip switches, no buttons. It really, once you get once you get used to it, you never want to go back, okay? I should point out that the Immersion RC Tramp also has a feature very much like Smart Audio. It's not identical, but it has the same functionality as far as you're concerned. Uh, and I would love to use Tramps as well. Uh, the main reason I'm not doing it is that freaking nobody has them in stock that I can find uh, I even reached out to the folks at uh, Immersion RC, and they don't even have one to give me. I tried to pull a string, abuse my position as a YouTube celebrity. Didn't work. Well, uh, so I'm using the Unify, and you got to find a place to put the Unify on your build. And that's not too much of a problem because the Unify is not that big. But if the Unify is kind of flopping around in your build, uh, that pigtail the, can get pulled off. And also, uh, the Unify can have problems with overheating, if it's especially on the higher output powers, if you don't mount it somewhere where it can get, if you don't mount it up against your carbon fiber plate, for example, if you put foam underneath it, like foam tape, it's going to overheat very easily if you're using more than maybe 25 or maybe 200 milliwatts. So what is the product that I've got that solves all these problems? Here it is. This is the TBS Unify Pro mounting board. It's designed by White Noise FPV, and I'll put the product link down in the video description. Uh, I'm gonna put two product links in the video description. One is the link direct to White Noise FPV. You can just go buy it from the designer. I'm also gonna put an Amazon link, and the Amazon link is a listing from Heli Nation. And the only reason I'm putting the Amazon link is because it's an Amazon affiliate link. If you go buy through that link, you'll give me a little bit of support. Uh, if you use an Amazon affiliate link, by the way, uh, Anything you buy from Amazon for the next, I think it's 24 hours or until you click a different affiliate link, uh, I get I get credit for that purchase. So if you're going to make a big purchase at Amazon and you click my affiliate link right before you make it, I think I get a cut. So a small way you can support me or you can just go buy direct from Heli Nation or White Noise FPV. Those are the places I know of that sell this. And what this is, is a mounting board for your Unify. Now this is the Unify Pro. This is the five volt version, the mounting board. And it lays down on top of the board and it solders on using these pads right here. Let's see if I can zoom in. Using these pads right here. And then you solder a wire right here and it just nicely fits into your stack above or below your, your, your PDB or whatever else is in your stack. It's a really, really nice way to do this. Now he's also got it set up. So on the underside, you actually have a three pin connector for it. Now it's placed for an X4R receiver, but you can also use a D4R or really you can use any receiver you want. They all kind of have a three pin here. Anything you can get to fit in these three pins, you can even use a spectrum receiver. It says five volts here, but it doesn't have to be five volts. You could feed 3.3 volts in there very easily. Anyway, it's just a convenient place to mount your Unify and your receiver. Let me show you how my build went together using this exact board. So here I am with my Unify Pro HV, and I do want to point out that I'm working with a high volt version. Uh, if you have the five volt version of the Unify, then the white noise board is slightly different because the pad layout of the five volt version is slightly different, but the basic procedure of soldering it on is the same. And I want you to see these big pads on the underside of the Unify uh, where the pigtail comes out. 
those are going to lay on top of a similar pad on the white noise board that is not for soldering. You're not going to solder it there. It's just there to make a little contact and help uh, transfer some heat out of the Unify. For the Unify HV, you solder it on using some bare pads on the actual edge of the board. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tack it in place, and then I'll solder it the rest of the way. So I'm going to start with this one pad with a little bit of solder on it. I'm going to hold the Unify in place, and I'm going to try and just get it to stick I'm going to create a little fillet of solder in the corner between the white noise board and the Unify. You're going to need to apply heat to both of these pads in order to get the solder to flow and stick. Here you can see I've got a little fillet. It's called F-I-L-L-E-T, not fillet, fillet. That's how they say it. A little fillet of solder in the corner between the board, uh, the white noise board and the Unify, and it's holding it in place. I'm also uh, using a spare top plate to keep from melting my craft mat. That's why that's there. Uh, that fillet is a not a great solder joint, but I'll clean it up later. Now I'm going to fill solder in, putting heat both on the white noise board and the Unify to create uh, a joint of solder in the corner there that will hold the board in place uh, in the remaining three pads. And here's the finished work. We can take a look at all of these solder joints. They're a little over full, I think. A good fillet actually is a little concave, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't space station. Uh, but they're making good contact between the white noise board and the edge of the Unify. It's going to hold it pretty securely. I feel pretty good about that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solder the solder bridge to choose whether I'm using an X4R or a D4R. That All that does is choose which of those three receiver pads are active or being used. You can use any receiver you want with this board as long as you find a way to solder it onto the underside of the board. It's just a receiver connection. There's nothing specific about the X4R or the D4R except the location of the pins. Now I'm going to solder on the X4R, and I think the best way to do this is with a little bit of foam tape on the underside, just to give it a little spacing. Uh, I've got the pins soldered on. It's a little bit of a sloppy solder job, so please forgive that. This receiver's seen better days. But I'm just sticking it on now with the foam tape, and then I'll go ahead and solder it up. Oops, there's something I forgot to show you. Uh, where do you solder up your actual uh, receiver wire? And the way you do it is you solder the receiver wire to this pad on the side of the white noise board. So just like you're wiring up your receiver itself, you're going to solder to here. Uh, this is not actually that much more convenient or tidy than just soldering to the receiver directly. Really, the white noise board in this case is just providing a convenient place to mount the receiver in the stack. And here's how it fits onto my QAVR. I have had to do some work uh, to get the height correct. I've had to add some nuts in one case, and those orange uh, O-rings are, they're not for vibration isolation. I've got the v rubber standoffs for that. It's just to get the height of all the boards, uh, the separation between them correct, so they don't touch. So you will definitely need to do some work with your standoffs and your screws to get everything right. But once you do, it is super neat and tidy. Well, there you go. That is the Unify Pro mounting board for the TBS Unify and Unify HV from White Noise FPV. Uh, I really like what it, how it cleaned up the build for my QAVR, but but I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm going to use it in every single build going forward. And here's why: number one, for a very low profile build. Uh, like I'm about to do a build of the Armitan, uh, the Chameleon, and there's not a lot of room there. It's a very low uh, top deck designed to keep the CG centered. And if you were to use a 4-in-1 ESC and a Betaflight F3, I actually question whether you would have room in the stack for that third uh, plate. 
that third board. So you might need to spread the build out in a case like that. The other reason that I hesitate to maybe use these on every single build going forward is, although it's very nice and compact, it does make working on the transmitter a little harder. For example, I recently noticed that the pigtail connector, the UFL connector on my Unify was not really secure and it actually got pulled off one flight, uh, which obviously <laughs> did not result in very good video performance for me. So I decided to direct solder it. And in order to get at the video transmitter to do the soldering, I had to take the, the legs off and kind of fold the whole thing over. So I was looking at the underside of the stack. Uh, it's going to require a little more disassembly to get at the receiver and the video transmitter in order to do basic repairs. Whereas if the video transmitter and the receiver are mounted to the top plate or the bottom plate, it's much easier to get in there without having to do you know, laparoscopic surgery. That being said, it really cleans up the build so much. It's so nice to have them nice and securely mounted. And I also like the fact that it gives a little bit better heat dissipation for the Unify, which as I mentioned earlier, can have some issues with overheating depending on how it's mounted. So this is definitely at a price of six bucks, uh, something that's worth having in your back pocket if you build with the Unify. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked the content and happy flying.